Hey guys, um, it's Gabriel, and uh, I'm here with Gail Jordan, and she's running for Tennessee State Senate District 14. And just like I've been promising you guys, she uh, was going to come in here, and uh, we had to move it back from 10 o'clock because I canceled on her. And so, anyway, she's made time for us this afternoon, and I look forward to introducing her to you. We've been having some great conversations already, and I was like, we got to get this on tape. <laughs> so, uh, here, here we go. Um, uh, if when you guys come in, if you could like the post, if you could share the post, if you could. Uh, mention where you're watching from and things like that over on the side. That'll be great. That way it, Facebook likes that stuff and boosts it up. And so there we go. Good afternoon. Thanks Brent for, uh, for tuning in. So uh, Gail, I'll start with my first question that people always ask me when I was running for office, why are you running for office? Oh, good. Thank you for having me, Gabe. I'm glad to be here and uh, participating in this technology. Um, I'm running for office. I ran for this seat in 2016 because I think there are some solutions to some of the issues that are facing Tennessee that we're not considering. Uh, any time, and, and um, in defense of the Republicans, any time one party gets in super control, we lose the opportunity to have some alternative solutions offered. And, and it seems like of all of the issues facing us, we have some other great ideas that we're not considering. And so I feel passionately and strongly about those solutions, and that's why I'm running. What's your most passionate solution? So right now, I, I use this little expression, our, our rural hospital closures have gone from being an urgency to an emergency. Oh, wow. and, so, and folks don't understand, they don't really connect the dots on what, what is happening. Our federal tax dollars, yours and mine, mm -hmm. that go to Washington, if the Tennessee legislature would bring that to a vote and we would, we would expand Medicaid, there are working people in Tennessee, working people, mm -hmm. people working one and two jobs who don't have health care. We've already paid for that with our federal tax dollars. Mm -hmm. If we pass that and expand Medicaid, those folks are able to have health insurance. That's important because right now, those folks who don't have health insurance, they continue to work, but they have no health care. Right. So they're sick like the rest of us are. They're sick with treatable diseases, mm -hmm. diabetes, heart disease, cancer. They work until they can't work anymore because they have no option for health care. They sure. go to the emergency room, which is the only recourse they have left, which is the most expensive mm -hmm. delivery right. of health care. And they're sicker when they, when they sure. present. The hospitals cut staff, they cut budgets, and eventually they close. That's happened in 10 rural hospitals in eight wow. years. And the problem is there's no end in sight until we address this problem. Have we had any close in this district? No, but 14? Bedford County Hospital is on the at-risk list. Wow, okay. Yeah, and what, right. what happens then, of course, then that puts more pressure on the other hospitals, sure. and we have, a, we have a downward spiral, so mm -hmm. to speak. And there's no solution to this. These people are working. They simply don't have employer-provided health care. Right. This, we've already sent our tax dollars, and we have left Billions of dollars so on the other table states. Year after if they live in states, another state, yes. they could be Kentucky, getting health care. Yes, Kentucky okay. did that, I and see. they helped provide insurance for their working folks who need it. Of those three hundred thousand folks in Tennessee, twenty thousand of those are veterans. Wow! So we've already paid for it, and we lose the money because that money goes away, sure. and we've lost three point two billion. And over other states are taking years. That yes, and using yes, that. yes, yes. So, so, so in order to so whether the economic message to you, which is $3.2 billion that we've just left on the table that doesn't add a single penny to Tennessee state budget, right. whether it's the economic message or it's the humanitarian message that our friends and neighbors, our, our fellow Tennesseans are struggling and suffering with treatable diseases. This is a problem with, a, with an instant solution. Right. And, as, and if we don't do this, our hospitals will continue to close because this is a, this sure. is a problem it's a that money has to be resolved. Right. Correct. Sure, sure. Correct. Wow. Okay. So um, we'll back up from that a little bit. Okay. Tell me about you. Like, sure. where are you from? Sure. Sure. I've lived in Rutherford County most of my adult life. Okay. Um, I raised my four kids. I had four kids in three years. Okay. I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. <laughs> wow. I threw Irish doubles the last right time. Now. That's okay. right. That's right. <laughs> I raised them on a little farm out in West Cassis. I okay. still live on that little farm. All right. My kids did every 4-H chick project and calf project. And sure. Developed a, 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 a very sincere appreciation for the land and for life in Tennessee. And just had a wonderful experience. Anyway, I was a stay-at-home mom that whole time. Okay. Um, they all went to public school. They're public school graduates. In fact, three of the four of them went to public universities in Tennessee, okay. two at UT in Knoxville and one at East Tennessee. And then I had a road that went out to Colorado for college. <laughs> um, after they started leaving for college, I decided to return to this long held dream I had of attending law school. So I became a lawyer in 2015. Now, okay. when you become a lawyer when you're 50 years old, <laughs> it's a little different than when you're 23. Sure. Um, um, legal 
justice is inaccessible for a lot of folks in our society because it's expensive and it's arduous and it's long and drawn out and it's inaccessible. So I um, felt compelled to use my position of privilege of being able to go to law school at 50 years old um, to help people. And I work now as a mediator for a nonprofit. Okay. All right. That's perfect. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And there's a lot of ground that we need to make up, I think, in uh, helping poor people get access to good legal to care, everything, right? to everything, but every, right. yeah, everything, but, everything. Is but so there's expensive. a lot, you know, money plays a lot yeah, in does. courts. Yes, it, it does. It really does. Um, let's see. So did you, where'd you go to high school? I went to high school just south of Atlanta. I went to Fayette County High School right. in Georgia. Did you play sports? I did some. I swam. Okay. Uh, I went to the University of Georgia, and they let me swim for them. I went very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's still, that's impressive. You swam for Georgia. I had a, that's awesome. I had a great, I had a great experience uh, at the University of Georgia. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Do you have a favorite political hero? Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm, I uh, am interested in the Supreme Court, the history of the Supreme Court. And okay, so I sure. read most of, the, most of the biographies of the Supreme Court justices. And so I guess Blackman, uh, Justice Blackman, is one of my favorite. He started out. Um, you'll have to teach lot, me because oh, I, I know nothing. You'll read, you know, I'll right, let you borrow the book. It's okay. called Becoming Justice Blackman. And it's all about he started out more on the conservative side. And as he went through, even as a Supreme Court justice, he became more of a liberal champion. So okay. I happen to particularly like his. Sure, story. sure. Do you, were, have you always been a liberal or like did, no. you, did you follow that kind of same path? No, I grew, okay. up in a, I grew up in a relatively uh, conservative, a moderately conservative path. Terms have changed yes, over the course no of my lifetime. Sure. So at the time, it would have been my household would have probably been known as a moderate household. Okay. I don't know, conservative, moderate, whatever it was. <laughs> and I and I followed that course through my young adulthood until okay. I, you know, sort of transitioned away from that in, in later see. life. What do you think led to that transition? Um, as my children began to grow, when you're a young parent, you think you just know it all, right? <laughs> sure, I mean, I'm sure. asking, right? Right, right. right, right. Yeah. So, and as as my children grew, you at least have to pretend to know it. Well, all. you try to, but <laughs> right? then they call yeah. you out. Exactly. As they get older, yes, it gets yes. more and more and, difficult. And, and for me, as I as I sort of grew out of the bubble that I had been in, um, I realized that life. For it was is not the same for everybody, okay. and what sometimes we make judgments that people should do certain things, they should behave certain ways, <laughs> and we do that based on our own perception. That's only natural. That's what we all do. And as my children began to get older, and and I began to see who they were and what their personalities were, I began to see that life is not that black and white. We don't sure. just um, just because we say that this is a this is how you should do life and you should do it in these steps. My children were sort of unconventional in how they, some of them, on how they went to college and how they've done their life. Um, and I, he, I, he, won't, he won't mind if I tell you this, but my oldest son, he didn't go straight to college. He went out to Colorado and he played ski and he skied and he right. skied and he kayaked and he mountain biked and he had an awesome time and he went to college a little later. Sure. Now he's done well. He's in his second year of law school at Gonzaga University. Some people University. need that, right? He that did. Break, yeah. And so instead of putting everybody in such little tiny boxes, and that has to do with everything. That has to do with not just how you go to college, but how you live your life and the choices that you need to make. We need to give people a little bit of flexibility. And, and so that was sort of the beginning of my recognizing that my worldview of being narrow and sort of uh, conservative minded, and there is one good what an true way to do things, it broadened a little bit. And, I see. and that's been the story of my... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, any other political heroes? Anybody that, that people have heard of before? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about another Supreme oh, Court justice then. No, no. <laughs> so, no. <I> mean, <laughs> it's all about the Come Supreme on. I mean, Court you've no, you, but you know that most people couldn't name more than three justices right now. Uh, well, I know. I right? guess so. I guess on so. Average, like yes. the average person. Yes, but they're so fascinating. And especially well, they play a very the important role. And I, and if you read the story of William O. Douglas, who was the, he was the guy that was, he was a big out west kind of a guy, and then he ended up coming back and being a Supreme Court justice. His story, William Douglas is another okay. one. So, right. yes, I'm going to have to stick with my Supreme <laughs> okay. Court Okay, fair justices. enough. All right. So, um, 
if you get elected, when you get elected, if you get elected, that's a tough quick way to sure. word that question. But are there any bills that are currently being tossed around in Nashville that you're interested in that you would be very much for or very much against or anything like that? Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you asked that because there's one that's kind of a you know a buzz topic, and I don't mean to be that play on words, <laughs> but there is uh, bipartisan support for the current cannabis bill okay. that's in there. And for me, it's been pretty obvious that I'm a pro cannabis candidate. Sure, uh, my children are in cannabis friendly states and I have been able to see firsthand uh, all of the different reasons why we should support this this legalization mm -hmm. of cannabis. Number one, the first reason is of course the, the pain reduction. There are so many diseases whose symptoms respond favorably to cannabis treatment. And if you know anything about cannabis, you know there are different compounds in the plant. Some that create the high that we know about from sure. the 60s and the 70s in the pot era. <laughs> right, right. And then there's the CBD, there's the, the, the pain treatment. So number one is the pain relief. Number two, for the business and tax revenues, states sure. like Colorado and Washington have funded uh, not only green space and education initiatives, but rehabilitation programs. Wow. So we have that business opportunity, and it's one of the few business opportunities on a large scale that you don't necessarily have to be a wealthy landowner in order to participate in that because there are a variety of folks in the pipeline of, of you know, of developing this business. Um, the third is uh, its application to our opioid addiction problem. So many of our folks, and as I've gone around the, uh, the, the district and talked to folks, there are so many families who've been touched by this opioid addiction problem. Mm -hmm. But because so often there is a nexus that begins the addiction. There's a broken ankle or right. you sure. know, a right. surgery or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then um, the pharmaceutical industry you know, has promoted these dangerous and addictive drugs and then it gets out of control and then we have the problem. The opi the uh, excuse me the cannabis can can supplant that first step which is the mm -hmm, pain reduction mm -hmm. and the pain relief so its application and it has been shown in so many states this application of um, uh, to the to the opioid addiction problem that's the third and then the fourth is the criminal justice reform African Americans are four to eight times more likely to be prosecuted for cannabis related charges wow. so for all of those reasons yeah. I'm a tremendous advocate for awesome. the legalization of cannabis okay that's great that's really great I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that uh, this is a very important topic especially here in Rutherford County but all across our district but uh, do you have any like do you have anything to add or say about the um, what happened with them closing down some of these stores? I mean, are, are you familiar with that? Sure, or? I am. Sure, I am. I think a lot of that has to do with our this old mentality that we have that anything associated we 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 have this negative association with weed, pod, and reefer, and all these words right. that we have used over time. This is a plant. Most medicines come from plants, sure. and so we like to say it's not it's not the weed from the seventies. <laughs> this is the medication of the future, and right. so you know. I think that um, I think that we have to educate ourselves on what these on what these components of this plant I are, right. and and, and I'll be watching closely this uh, what has transpired with these stores that were sure. the, whose doors were closed. Right, right. I agree. Uh, let's see here. What else? Oh, um, so here locally, where do you like to go eat? Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, you have a favorite restaurant? Um, I we I like to go to I like a hibachi you know okay. we do the, the vegetables and sure. the show and yeah. the whole kind of thing. Do you have I, a favorite hibachi place? Oh gosh, can I can I mention a business? Is that yeah, fair? Oh, yeah, that's really fair. fair. Yeah, I, like I, I like to put you on the I spot. Like to go, well, you just did. <laughs> I like Samurai, but there's one closer to home on my side of town. There's a brand new one. It's X I A O. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce that. Chow, 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 chow. I don't know what it is, but, but it's anyways, good. It's a hibachi. And it's okay. awesome. All right. It's wonderful. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So early voting has already started. Yes. Right, and it's no secret that the Democrats are outnumbered uh, in across the state. Right? Right now do you have like what's your plan on winning this election I'm glad that you asked that yes we know that I mean obviously we right. know what the math <laughs> is but we think we have a pretty universal message and I'm and the reason I say that is this hospital closure problem this health care problem it has such an economic appeal to folks to, you know to our business folks who understand this is not a smart business decision this is not a wise economic decision so we know that we have a lot of Republican appeal for that infrastructure we, we also know that that has broad appeal, sure, so, right. and we're an advocate of that. Education, I can't imagine anybody who's opposed to uh, increasing our teacher pay. We have, we keep hearing about this, uh, 
budget. We have this budget mm -hmm. surplus. Well, not if our teachers haven't gotten a substantial raise in a number of years. And and, and I, my children are public school kids. I have a deep appreciation for the job that our public school teachers do. There is no reason it's unfounded that we have what we're going to call a budget surplus without our teachers having a, either a substantial raise or an increase in benefits. And at the same time, we have this student over-testing problem that we have. And as I said, my children were public school kids. I know what that looks like back in the day when my children were there. We only had a handful of days. Now we have upwards of 30 days a year. That should have broader Republican appeal. Anybody should support that. Our sure. teachers, we keep using words to revere and respect our teachers, but they ring hollow if we don't back it up with an actual tangible benefit. I agree. I agree. I think that also there are a lot of people out there that no longer find themselves in the Republican Party or sure. in the Democrat Party. Like the, the number of independents has grown tremendously. Well, and that's I get. I know that's the whole point of the podcast mm -hmm. is that we have that those letters, the D and R, are so polarizing. And I understand that. Here's what I've tried to tell people as I'm out campaigning: disregard the letters for just a minute. Right. Just don't worry about the letters for a minute. Listen to what I'm saying about what we can do to help Tennessee. Listen to what I'm saying about how we can fix this problem, the opioid problem, our rural hospitals, our infrastructure, our education. Listen to the results. Don't worry about the letters so much. Sure, sure. Well, I, mean, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're on the campaign trail, and I just really appreciate you coming in. Oh, Is there anything you else you want to say? Other than I, I appreciate the opportunity to get the message across. Everybody, come visit the website. The shortened version is gj4tn.com. Oh, yeah. yeah. The long version is Gail Jordan for Senate, <laughs> tn14.com. Visit the website. The number on all of my literature and on my website <laughs> is my personal cell number. I was going to ask, how's been. the best way to get a com com Do you do Twitter? Do you, are, are I do you all of it. Okay. I do all all right. I have the world's best campaign manager and social media coordinator. All right, and so that's she's great. sitting across the room there. So <laughs> not only is she my best friend, Susan Steen, but she's also been the best campaign manager, best friend, and she does all of our social media. And she is responsive and accessible. And so no doubt, the that's how us, this lined up. Absolutely, so, yes. absolutely. Right. So please reach out to me, ask any questions that you have, messenger, text, phone, Twitter, Facebook, anything. We're, we're accessible and available. Great. And, and if you're elected, we continue to be? Absolutely. You've got my cell awesome. phone. That's going to okay. become valuable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Just end it.